does have a forehead. He saw, yeah, they little. know I have eyeballs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, if you could see what's underneath, you would say, put it back on, put it back on. <laughs> okay, here we go. Well, welcome to another special edition of the Live from the Heartland show. And we're broadcasting live from the stage at the Heartland Cafe in the heart of Rogers Park at the corner of Glenwood and Lunt. And I'm Michael James, and I welcome you all. It is, the, I believe, the 7th of December and the year 2011. And um, we're honored to uh, have with us two special guests. Uh, first, I have an old friend and comrade out of Connecticut. We grew up together in our high school years. We were in the same hot rod club. That would be Charlie Taylor out of Nashville, Tennessee. And he is uh, a singer and a songwriter and has a couple of albums out. And he happened to be in town, and I invited him to join us because sitting between us is Paula Nelson, who is out of Austin, Texas, and Paula is the daughter of Willie Nelson, and she's a hell of a singer in her own right, and she's on tour, and she is playing next door to the Heartland Cafe tonight in the Red Line Tap. So we've taken this opportunity to do a special edition of the Live from the Heartland show. So good afternoon, good evening, actually, to both of you. Hello, thank you for having me. Thank you. Good to be here. Well, Paula, you're the, you're the, the center arena here, the star attraction. Um, <laughs> What's it like to be uh, a singer and a member of a band on the road uh, who happens to be the daughter of, of one of America's favorite singers? Well, I've been doing it for a long time, so I, I should have a good answer for you. Well, look, any answer will be great. <laughs> it's great. It's really. We enjoy. This band that I have with me now is, um, I've had a few bands before, and we've been together for about eight years now. And uh, so we've really worked out all the kinks, and uh, we travel really well together, and uh, it's great. You know, it's, it's definitely, um, I'm a really bad waitress, Mike. <laughs> I didn't have much other choice. <laughs> so how rigorous a tour are you on right now? Uh, I know that you had been scheduled to be on the regular Saturday edition of Live from the Heartland show, but your scheduling uh, had you in Michigan on Friday night and on Saturday night, so... Uh, that's why we're doing this special edition. So how, where are you going and how quickly are you going? We've been out for about a week. And uh, tomorrow we're, we have two shows in Cleveland tomorrow. So we're driving from here to Cleveland. And then we play a show. And then we wake up and play another show. And then we come back and play in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. And then we drive home. <laughs> how many days is the tour that you're on? I mean, I, I have a kid who's in, been in a band. And, you know, he, he'd be out on the road for 30 days. And he'd be home for 12 days. And he'd be out on the road again. <laughs> What's it like for you? Do you get to go home at all? Yeah, well, you know, in the early days, in those first bands, we, and in this one too, the early years, we would travel for uh, one January, we played 28 days wow. out of 31. And uh, that was brutal. <laughs> that was rough. One so I know I can do it. Yeah, yeah, I know I can. But boy, we, we fine tuned it these days to where we go out two weeks out, two weeks home, two weeks out. And that what's, seems to What's work. your sense of the crowds these days? I mean, who's coming out to hear music? I mean, as you, you play more and people get to know you better, um, are you building up a following? Do people come out or is it, uh, is it tight and scarce with the economy? What are you feeling on the road? You know, the places that we've already played, uh, they've stuck with us. They've been very loyal. We just did a Colorado tour um, last month and they all came back. It was packed full. Every night it was packed. So we did really well. And I think we, you know, we, we have these little paths that we follow and, and um, I, was, I was telling Mary earlier that, you know, we, we play the same show to five people that we do to 5,000 and uh, we just enjoy playing and so I think people see that and uh, they want to come back and be a part of it. Tell us a little bit about your music. What, uh, what songs you do. Uh, we'll probably, if, when this gets shown somewhere in, on uh, a website or on YouTube uh, mm -hmm. or on heartlandcafe.com uh, We'll probably interspace it with some of the you playing tonight next to the store at the Red Line Tap. But for, uh, for right now, give, us, give me a hint about what kind of music you play, what kind of songs, how do you get those tunes, are they other people's tunes, do you write in your own tunes? Lay it on me. I write uh, mostly all my own stuff. Oh, um, great. It's uh, therapeutic. You, you probably right. know that yeah, as well. Uh, but, you know, there's, I had such great influences that um, I, I have a different wide variety of music you know I like all kinds of music um, and so I, I write all my songs but there's a lot of covers that I do like there in, in fact um, we're about to do a new CD called Under the Influence and uh, 
I wanted to... Great like, title. <laughs> thanks. Really? Well, I wanted to um, get some of these older songs, you know, uh, like from Jesse Coulter and yeah. Waylon Jennings and Roger Miller and Leon Russell and Chris Christopherson, all, all of which, Mickey Newberry, all of which are great influences. And um, so I'm going to do, the next CD is all dedicated to those, those folks so I can get it. You know, this younger, and a younger audience or someone who doesn't know those songs, I want them to be able to hear them. How about genres in, in influencing you? I mean, clearly you had a lot of influence from your dad and uh, probably a lot of wonderful, great musicians who've been around. Uh, and then you've got your brothers and sisters who are playing. So <laughs> it's, you're surrounded. You're, you're immersed in it. Uh, but so there's a strong country influence. Uh, yeah. I'm sure there's a, a folk influence. What about where are you at in rock and roll and any jazz, rhythm and blues? What kind of things? Love it do you all. Love it all. I really do. And I, you know, I like uh, the old country. Is of course what I grew up with. I hate the you know? new country. Yeah. I gotta tell you, I have a hard time with it. It's this. hard. It just seems like there's not a whole lot of soul in it. You know, but um, but then there. Are the, I don't want to. To diss any folks. Give me so Web Pierce by the length, yeah. you know, by Poncha Train or something. Yeah, it's something it seems a little too conveyor belt these days. You know, you, they crank them out too quickly, and then they disappear, and you don't hear from them. You know, and so all the guys that and ladies that I have have that staying power of. Uh, let me let me ask a, a songwriting question. Every, songwriting is a process, as as we know, but what's your process? I mean, do you store ideas and then sit down and? write a bunch or do you write I, as you go along or I, I don't play any instruments on stage but i i write right. with a piano and, okay. and guitar um well you'll see when you see my band you'll know why because yeah, <laughs> right. they're so good i don't need to play you know i don't That's really good. play that well i write well with it but um so my process is i i hear the melody first i'll play okay. a melody either on the piano or guitar or sometimes i'll just think of it in my head and i'll grab my little electronic device right. and, and uh sing the melody and then I'll make up little makeshift words that don't sure. aren't going to be permanent but right, it I sets understand. the melody the phrasing right. line in there um, with the melody and that's how I, and there's been times that you know I'll write down in a journal certain uh, thoughts and words but I always mm -hmm. I've gotten all of them through the melody first yeah I know yeah. we were talking earlier and you said that uh, songwriting to you is like a journal yeah so yeah it is. It's really personal. I haven't written with a lot of people. Well, no one really, yeah. um, just for that same reason. Mm -hmm. Is it's so personal that it's difficult to sit down and make something up? You know, like um, I all mine have a. I can remember right where I was and right. who I was dating at the time. It, speaking <laughs> of dating, uh, do you uh, in your writing are you influenced by personal experiences? Are you influenced by things in the news? What's going on in the world? Any politics? What, what kind of things do you like to incorporate into your tunes? Uh, I try and stick writing with things that I know, you know, that I really know. And, and uh, God, you know, I could go into politics stuff, but I just, I don't feel right. I don't know enough about it. I do know that, um, you know, I like, I'm a peaceful, I'm a peaceful person. So I'm all about the peace. Well, you know, your dad and uh, some other guys around him, they were the kind of uh, the rebellious country singers <laughs> and uh they were a wonderful thing to come on the scene because there was a lot, there was a, definitely a conservative strain in uh, in Nashville and in the Grand Old Opry so. and some racist yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And clearly they they bucked that trend and <laughs> yeah. uh, on the cultural level and the, just the spirit that they emanated. And I'm sure that you you say you're a peaceful gal. You I'm sure that that you know seeped into your Most genes too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what kind of uh, what do you what do you hope for in your in your career? Do you uh, do you uh, really get off on traveling and just playing tunes for people? Do you uh, aspire to uh, you know a bigger and bigger uh, success story? What do you what do you got going on? I, I I I'm really content with what the way things are. Truly, I've I've stayed under the radar for many many years and on purpose. I just. I think because I grew up in this business, right. on the tour buses and in the hotel rooms, and, and it's like, I know, <laughs> it's not as glamorous as it may appear to others, you know? And so I, I really enjoy having my time at home. I've got a lot of animals, um, ah. goats and a donkey. And, you got you know, goats. I got goats, four goats and a donkey. And who, you, do the goats get milked? No, no, they just no. get spoiled, rotten. Yeah, goats, will, they're, they're assertive, too. Goats will take their, 